time. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, where is the scoping process of the review of the poultry code up to, please? And then you, Don. Do I ask it in this section? Yep. Um, Senator Tim Chapman, First Assistant Secretary, Biosecurity Animal Division. Um, as you're probably aware, in 2013, the Animal Welfare Committee agreed that a review of the Poultry Code is a priority. Um, on the 10th of December, um, members of the AWC agreed in principle the scope of that review um, and um, further engagement with the various stakeholders on the scope of the review and on industry agreement for funding arrangements are required before the review can pro progress a lot further. Um, the development of those standards for poultry um, or standards and guidelines for poultry is jointly funded by the Commonwealth, state and territory governments and industry. And the AHA, the Animal Health Australia, will manage the review process. And um, that, sorry. that review process will include um, extensive stakeholder consultation. Um, the process is expected to take about three years or at least three years before it's completed. And um, at this stage, a target date and terms of reference have not yet been determined. Uh, I understand this is from a response from one of my questions on notice. Um, it, you stated preliminary views on scope have been sought from Egg Farmers of Australia and the Australian Chicken Meat Federation Incorporated. Um, I understand that views haven't been sought from like the Free Range Farmers Association or animal welfare groups. So one, could you explain why it was only sought from those groups and how these preliminary views fit into the scoping process? Jackie South, Assistant Secretary, Animal Welfare Branch. Senator, at this point in time, the work that's been done on this scoping exercise has been undertaken through the Animal Welfare Committee. The Animal Welfare Committee has engaged with yes, a limited number of stakeholders, to start to form a view around what the scope of this exercise might look like. So when we're talking about scope, we're talking about elements that, for example, are currently in the existing model code for poultry. So we are getting down into low levels of detail. So for example, things like the behavioural needs and environmental enrichment of animals. So that's the level that we're trying to get engagement from states and territories to inform what this review might look like, how long it might take, how complex it's going to be, how much it's going to cost. So that work is still ongoing. There is a more extensive consultation process that obviously needs to be undertaken, but before we can do that, we really need that preliminary work to be done and we need to be able to engage with Animal Health Australia, who will ultimately have responsibility for the project management. Um, and I understand you're still getting down to the details, but will you be covering ducks and the um, more, more waterfowl? Because they do obviously have more specific needs. So you'll be getting down to that level of detail? Yeah, I think we, we covered this at last es estimates and other species are uh, being considered. And they are also, as I understand, covered in the, the model code. So it is very much mirroring the existing code or using that as a basis. So the answer is yes. Thanks. Um, Dr Grimes, is the government um, supporting or considering supporting the reopening of the live export trade to Bahrain? Um, Senator, um, uh, um, Deputy Secretary Glyde, um, in fact, should we, uh, it's really handled in the next, the next item. One? Yeah, the yeah, next I was one. just okay. thinking that appropriate, okay. yeah, rather than have us go off track going across different areas, it may be better to come back if the committee's comfortable with that. Okay, so just to clarify, because I also had questions about buffalo exports to Vietnam, so that's that in the next That would be live animal too. exports as well. Mm -hmm. Run them both. If, if, the, if the committee's happy to run them both together, then um, Deputy Secretary Glyde will be able to, um, so to assist you. So we're doing them, the them together? Um, Chairman? Chair, Sorry. Are we, are, are we doing all these sections together? Biosecurity animal and live animal exports we're doing together. Are yes, we, we are. Okay, yeah, so we've got the officers okay, here okay. now. Yep. So, oh, could I, I go so. back to my question then, please? Which was about Bahrain. 
if you're reopening the trade. Yep, so um, Deputy Secretary Glyde will give you an update you, on sir. that matter. Um, Senator, the uh, yeah. government is currently con uh, considering uh, its policies in relation to... Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, the government is considering its policies in relation to opening, the, uh, reopening the trade, um, and I really can't comment much more than that. So you've said that it's, uh, there's consideration. Does that mean there's talks with Bahrain about this? Um, or talks with the pastoralists or all everybody? There's, there has been discussions uh, from with the industry um, in the sense that uh, the industry is keen to uh, reopen trade where SCAS compliant supply chains can be established. Uh, there's been discussions there. There's been discussions across a whole range of uh, different countries, including Bahrain. Uh, the government has made it very clear its intention to um, to do what it can to reopen the trade, to uh, increase the trade, uh, because of the value to the Australian rural economy. So, considering Bahrain has completely replaced live Australian sheep imports with Australian chilled and frozen meat, um, has um, an economic assessment been done in terms of where the greatest benefit comes to Australia? Um, Senator, we haven't, as far as I'm aware, we haven't, uh, certainly the Live Export Division nor the Australian Bureau of Agriculture, Resource Economics and Sciences hasn't uh, done any economic assessment. What we, I think, might be in a p position to describe what's happened to the trade. I think earlier on in your question, uh, your question earlier this morning, you mentioned that as a result of the suspension of the live trade, there had been a significant increase in the import of um, Australian boxed, chilled, frozen, um, lamb, and that's certainly the case, but we haven't had an investigation into what are some of the other factors that are happening in that market, because we'd also imagine uh, that there would be some substitution of live animals from other um, exporting countries, as well as importing um, animals for uh, consumption. As you'll be aware, one of the, uh, there's a considerable import of animals to do uh, with uh, particular religious festivals um, in, in the region. And so those sort of things do en end up uh, it, uh, distorting the market as well. So there's certainly the case, and we can give you, Ms. Irwin might be in a position to be able to give you the statistics if that would help, or we can perhaps uh, take that on notice and supply uh, what we know about uh, the, the box trade and the live trade over the last uh, three or four years. One last one, Senator, I'm sorry. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> concerning the recent high mortality sheep and cattle shipment aboard the Ocean Drover to Israel and Jordan after the ship broke down for four Never. days near the Cocos Islands, was the department advised that full repairs had not been made and the ship was only able to continue at a reduced speed? Yes, the department um, right throughout the difficulties that the Ocean Drover experience was um, fully informed by the company involved, Wellards. We established a critical incident response team to make sh do our best to make sure that um, from the government side we could um, make sure that the, um, the welfare of the animals was uh, well looked after and that the, the vessel uh, was able to make it through. But that is part of our standard practice uh, with any of these uh, voyages. So did you understand that there was sufficient food? And if you understood that, why did it stop at Dubai to allow emergency fodder on board if all those checks had been made? Because of the, um, the, the fact that the vessel couldn't proceed at its previously organised uh, uh, speed, um, it soon became apparent that even though we do require um, additional feed, fodder, etc., for the animals on top of what you would normally require in a voyage for contingency purposes, that additional amount wasn't going to be sufficient. So after consultation, uh, the, in, uh, the uh, company um, and ourselves spoke with the various ports involved and were able to organise for uh, additional <coughs> fodder to be provided to those, those animals on board. Why didn't you consider that that boat should have returned to Australia, considering the um, serious problems on board? Um, that was the, we looked at a number of options in terms of contingency management during that critical incident response time. Uh, we had to contemplate the questions such as the length of the voyage back to Australia, the difficulties that we might have uh, in terms of animal health uh, and disease in uh, having those animals return to Australia, and on balance the, the, um, the decision was made in the interests of the uh, welfare of the animals that the, the best solution was to take on board feed and continue with the journey. Thank you, uh, Thank you Senator, Chair. and I'm sorry I do have to come back online. Senator